Welcome to the Backpage Lead Vidcast, where we're joined, as usual, for his wit and wisdom by Wayne Carey. Charlie, how are you, mate? Good, mate. Um, let's talk about taggers. We touched on them briefly a few weeks ago when Hayden Ballantyne was um, <clears throat> whacked on his chin by Matthew Scarlett. In the news this week, um, Ryan Crowley making a bit of a pest of himself against uh, Chris Judd. And then, of course, we had Andrew Rains and Joel Selwood uh, as well. Gary Ablett tweeted infamously during the um, Frio Carlton game that he thought Crowley should concentrate on the ball and um, Judd should be getting more of a free kick. Is this just a, a fad for the week or the, the last few weeks no, or is it a, the is tag, it a growing tag, issue or no? No, taggers have been around forever and a day. They've been around, you know, you know that, your, your Libertores, your Jose Ramiro's. Anthony Stevens started as a tagger for the Kangaroos. Who's, have been around forever and a day. They've got a job to do. They're, they're very much valued within their team to be able to shut down a, a star like a Judd or an Ablett yeah. um, or a Joel Selwood. I mean, you shut those guys down and you, a lot of the times it goes towards, well, it does, it goes towards your team winning the game. So I'm, I, don't, I don't begrudge them, obviously, if they're breaking the rules and they should be penalised against. Yeah. And in terms of Gary Ablett's tweet, well, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think he said anything too untoward. I think that... Um, a lot of players are branded robots and they don't say anything and you can't get anything out of them. Um, he's sitting on the couch watching a game of footy, giving his view on what's going on within a contest. I think it's fantastic. Um, makes for, uh, makes for uh, a good uh, battle the next time they go up against one another. Looks like Ablett's not going to play, no. he's going to miss another week. That's but right. the next time they play on one another, then it just adds to the spice in that particular game. So if anything, it, um, it, it grows the... Uh, it grows the interest in that particular contest. Well, I reckon about 90% of the footy going public would have agreed with what he said. The sentiments. Oh, well, look, you, you, you always do. But I, I, all the supporters for all the supporters for Fremantle think Crowley's doing a great job. So he's got a job to do for his team. He's not there to be loved by, by the player he's playing on or the opposition supporters. I mean, he's, he's, he's done a very good job on some very good players. And, and I don't think Gary Ablett tweeting is going to make him stop. Jeff Geeshan, uh, the umpire's d director of umpiring, said he's noticed that some of the taggers are grabbing hold of the wrist of the, the key playmakers, sort of down, down quite low. I don't know. What do you do if well, you're the getting... well, well, if they're being well, if they're being grabbed, it's simple. They've got to be penalised, and they've got to be penalised early. And then once they're penalised early in the game, then it's simple. They'll stop doing it. It's not a puzzle. Even with three umpires, it gets a lot of it gets missed, though, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it does. I think sometimes the umpires sort of view it as you know they, they let it go, and if they're breaking the rules, if if they're holding on and you know hanging on and scragging and doing things that you, you're not meant to do, then simple, penalise them. Is impeding a player's run at the ball is that um, subject it, to penalty? It, hap it happens all over the ground. Yeah. It happens all over the ground. It happens to. To keep forwards, almost to, to shepherd. Isn't yeah, it? It, well, it does. But it, you know, when you see time and time again, and when you go to games live, you see time and time again where guys are just yeah. simply running from half back to half forward, yeah. and a player will come in and just block their run. Because what it does is, when you get into a stride, if you've got a stride 100, 150 metres, it, it's you know the players are, are, are athletes; they do that. But then when you get stopped and you have to start again, and you get stopped and you start again, so from half back to get back to half forward, you might have been stopped three times by your direct opponent. Yeah. just so you have to start up again. So the blocking and, and, and shepherding off the ball happens a million times a game. And play on. Play on. You mentioned Gary Ablett unlikely to play against Ryan Crowley this weekend, which robs that game of much, much of his interest, I, I would have thought, for a neutral observer. Um, also interesting injury news today out of West Coast uh, in that Josh Kennedy looks like missing 12 weeks with an ankle injury, which... On top of Mark Lacroix and Mark Nikoski, robs them of a bit of firepower, doesn't it? It does. He's a uh, he's a gun player. But I saw Darling um, play after he went off on the weekend, and oh, ultra impressed with Darling. Jack Darling is a he's a he's a superstar in the making. Maybe even maybe even better than I might even end up being better than Kennedy. I mean, he the way he attacks the footy. Oh, I just I love the way he goes about it. Um, he can really play. The other thing that I liked is he got back to a contest. He doesn't just go for marks. He was yeah. front and square, kicked a goal front and square. I really like that about him. Um, but that's a, it is. It's a big loss to West Coast because on the weekend, I reckon they had the biggest forward line ever to line up in a game. <laughs> they had uh, Kennedy, yeah. they had Darling, they had Lynch, and they had Cox all in that forward line. I mean, yeah. even back in the day of Jonathan Brown, Alistair Lynch, 
um, and Bradshaw. Bradshaw. I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not even as big as those guys. So this was a massive forward line going up against the Tigers. Kennedy going down is a big loss, but, um, but I think they've got, the, they've got the firepower to cover him. Um, what, what is interesting, though, he went back on the ground for at least a quarter, maybe a quarter and a yeah. half after he came off. So, you know, did he do any more damage in that yeah. time? You know, I suppose the, only the doctors would know that. Um, just on Jack Darling quickly, had you not seen much of him before this weekend's game? I'd seen him play, obviously, on the TV, but you don't get an appreciation for his attack on the footy. I mean, I, I saw him, you know, I saw him three or four deep, you know, probably realistically, not a, not a realistic chance of marking it, but his, his whole aim was to hit the pack hard, take the pack with him and bring the ball to the ground for the smaller um, Eagles players. And he, and he just, you know, and, and, and really crunch the pack. I mean, nearly hurt himself every time he did it. He, he's, so is that a bit of Jonathan Brown, or who yeah, does he well, remind you of? Well, he, well he's, he's, he reminds me, he, I don't like to compare players with other players. He just attacks the footy as, as well as anyone that I've seen. Wow. Um, from the high-flying eagles, let's talk about another bird that isn't flying terribly high, which is the hawks. Um, are they pretenders, or are they just having a flat spot? Well, for me, you go back to 2008, weren't expected to do all that well. Um, they got into a grand final, they, ups, they upset the Cats. They deserve to win it, they're, they're a very good team. Since then, they've been, let's be honest, they've been disappointing. Last year they got back to a preliminary final, could have easily ended up in the grand final. Yep. Um, but once again, not a lot of expectation on them last year. Now, all of a sudden, expectation on them again this year, yep. the same as it was, what it was at the end of 2008, and all of a sudden they're, um, they're letting us down. I really think that they're not um, they're not playing um, the sort of footy that we expected them to play, and that's not very professional, Charlie. Having your phone no, it's still the, on. It's the cameraman's. Come on, mate, fire up. <laughs> um, yes, yeah. Good. Uh, take your point. We discussed Hawthorne a few weeks ago, and I think you thought that the Hawthorne supporters didn't have much to worry about. They're two and three now. They have had a tough five rounds, but to to capitulate the way they did in the second half against Sydney was. Some worrying signs there, wasn't there? Yeah, well, they got off to a really good start, and then to I think two goals after half time mm. um, with you know, the firepower that they've got, it would, you know, terribly disappointed. Their captain was back in the side, Luke Hodge. So yeah, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be disappointed if I was a Hawks supporter. And they line up against the Saints in round six uh, on a Saturday night, big game. Yeah, massive game. Saints um, they won last week, uh, not not convincingly against Melbourne. I'd expect, um, yeah, this, I think this will be a really hard-fought contest. Could go either way. 50-50, OK. Quickly, Johnny Longmire, coach of the Sydney Swans, that did such a great job on Hawthorne in Tassie at the weekend. You were recruited at the same time, two New South Wales boys, recruited at the same time by North. Was that 87 or 88? Uh, 88, if we go into the Kangaroos. Yep. Um, could you have ever foreseen that he'd make a great coach? Were there signs there all the way through? Oh, no, there, oh, I didn't think there were signs that he'd, he'd coach um, at all, really. But he's always been a very serious type type yep. of guy, Longers. Yep. Um, not that he can't have a joke and have some fun, but he's, yeah, he's always been pretty serious and, and professional in the way he's gone about things. So in terms of that, um, you know, and, and, and I guess he's done a great apprenticeship. I mean, he's done a, you know, under Paul Roos uh, the whole time, which is... He's one of your favourites. Who mm. I think um, you know, a very cool customer. So, you know, you, I just watch Horse in the box, and I'm sure he's learned a lot off Roosy, um, although he is his own man. And, and let's be honest, a lot of people thought Sydney would... Uh, well, I think I been, we've been saying it for about five yeah. years now yeah. that they might slide. They just show that they're a very good football club. Doesn't matter who comes in, who goes out. The next person that comes in's got a job to do. He does it. They're predictable to one another. They they work hard. Um, they back one another up. They're they're a quality team. Quality team, not team. not a team of individuals. They're a quality team. Uh, I went to the SCG two weeks ago to see North Melbourne play them and. Mm -hmm blown away by just how tough and hard at it the midfield was, which is I think their strength. Forward line still unconvinced about, but um, the midfield is as good as any going around isn't it, at the moment. Oh, look, there's there's other um, flashier midfields, so to speak. There's other midfields with bigger names, but as I said, they work together and they get a job done. And that's exactly what they're doing at the moment. They're getting a job done and um, they're playing good team footy. Yep. Um, 
highlights from the weekend. Lenny Hayes just keeps on delivering too. A guy who's 32 coming back from a knee reconstruction. Just, I think he's fourth or fifth in the um, coaches award. He just fantastic way to come back from that, isn't it? Oh, awesome. I uh, I love the way Lenny Hayes plays footy, and uh, everyone and everyone does. I mean, he's in the same mould as your, your Selwoods and, mm. and these guys. So. No, he's the, uh, he, he was uh, sorely missed last year and he's back. He'll have to be at his best um, this week against the Hawks because, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're quite competent in there as well. Your Mitchells and, and uh, Sewells and a few others. So they'll be, uh, they'll be up against it. Let's just look quickly ahead to round six. Um, there doesn't appear to be many marquee matchups. So Kilda Hawthorne is obviously quite a good one. West Coast play north. Um, is this going to be a growing problem for the league? I mean, I know we've got Greater Western Sydney and Gold Coast and Melbourne are out of form. There just seems to be a succession of less than five-star games scheduled each week. Um, no, look, I, I don't think so. I mean, obviously, Greater Western Sydney and Gold Coast and Melbourne have been disappointing. They're, you know, they're, those three sides are sort of finding their way and we, we know we're going to get that. But I think in general, I think the footy this year's been great. I mean, I went to the West Coast Richmond game last week. Um, Trent Cotchin is going to be an absolute superstar. He's already a star. I think he's got one best and fairest, but he is he is special. You've he nominated is, two now, Darling is, and Cotchin. He is Cotchin is a is a gun. He's a gun. And uh, saw him. Well, I've seen him play the last two weeks. Richmond were very good. They need to have a win. That's an interesting matchup. Yeah, it is that interesting. one because Port Adelaide have been ultra competitive. Yep. As have Richmond. Yep. Now, either one of these sides, well, one's going to lose unless it's a draw, and they probably fall off. You probably say after that, no chance. Yep. Okay? Um, the winner, you know, they stay alive. At, and at Port Adelaide on Sunday. Yep. At Port Adelaide on Sunday. And I think, I think the form Richmond's been in, you'd be really disappointed if they went over there and didn't put in yep. a good performance and beat Port Adelaide. But Port Adelaide haven't been all that bad either and no. really just got overrun in the end by, by the Crows. So, th- so that's an intriguing uh, matchup for, for the year. Trent Koch and Jack Darling, there you go. Heard it here first. Superstars in the making. Wayne Carey, thanks again for your time. Look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Charlie. Cheers.